Hey guys, Harley from Cricket Fanatics Magazine here and welcome to the Unlockdown series. Very special episode for me today because it's obviously the 50th episode of the Unlockdown series. Since we started it at the beginning of lockdown, we've, you know we've interviewed quite a lot of players. We've likes of Lance Klusner, Ashwell Prince. Um, we've had um, Sunay Lewis on the show, Denisha, and so many, so many others. I don't want to don't be offended if I left out your name. It's all coming off the top of my head now as I'm sitting here. But I thought this would be a, a quite an interesting, interesting topic to go with and an interesting collabo that we have here on the screen. So I'd like to welcome KB and Toomey to the show. Um, I think um, this is going to be an awesome episode to get to know them better and get to know their life story. So welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us, uh, Khaled. Thank you so much. And also congratulations on the episodes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I've worked very hard for those 50. <laughs> 50 not out. 50 not out. Yeah, 50 not out. <laughs> so, guys, uh, let's talk about the lockdown a little bit. I don't want to talk too much about it and bore people too much because we know we just get the same information over and over again. But I thought I'll talk to you guys about a little bit about lockdown and how it's been for you. Um, we can start with KB and then move to, to me and then talk about what you guys have been doing to stay fit or with regards to your cricket skills. I know to me it will be different for you because you're a bowler. Maybe you have more options available to you than KB was more of a, of a batsman. How do you keep those skills sharp, etc.? Um, tell me what you got up to in lockdown with regards to that. Oh, yes, it's been a roller coaster. Yes, I've been Netflixing and chilling. And then, obviously, after like two weeks of just chilling, uh, I had to get working again. Obviously, it started a bit tough because we couldn't get outside. So it is just like, you know, a medicine ball running around the complex and doing a lot of sprints and all that. Yeah, but uh, what can I say, man? You do what you have to do. But like after since they said we're allowed to running, so which has been good where, you know, getting my, uh, what's this? aerobic fitness up just yeah it's been running and doing the same thing over and over again i know it's boring but ugh, it's part of our life so you, you keep going at it and like in yeah. terms of the cricket skills uh, i've been using a lot of tennis balls hitting like throwing the ball against the wall and just hitting it back and obviously do me sometimes it actually ball to me even though <laughs> at the end of the day i hit the ball far and then she complains <laughs> that i'm hitting the ball but, uh, yeah, that's what I've been getting up to. <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. So, to me, from your point of view, from a bowler's point of view, um, do, are, are you the type of person that likes to bowl rep um, the repetitions, put a pointer down, or mark down, and then bowl on that? Um, is that something that you've done, or what have you been up to during this lockdown? No, I think uh, for for me, what uh, due to like my skills and stuff, um, the the main focus is actually my hand, my head, and strong base. So like I do a repetition of that and do stationary stationary bowling and stuff. But yeah, it's it has been good because I I've I started um since the lockdown started, so it's actually building up now because now I can actually go to to maybe a cricket ground and um bowl a couple uh bowl a couple of balls. Yeah, but uh, with my fitness, it's it's always been doing my stuff at home, um, doing uh, my heat sessions all the time because hey, Russ is always ticking whether you did your <laughs> your your sessions or not. So it's <laughs> it's been good. So that's awesome. So um, you get, are you getting a lot of um backing from your 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 different franchises, etc., or your your provinces? And um, with regards to Cricket South Africa, um, how have they put in things in place for you, Tumi? And um, with regards to UKB, your um, obviously Easterns, and well, how have they been? How's Richard been with regards to that, and keeping up to date with all of you guys, and, and making sure that you're doing what you need to do? Well, obviously, with Northwest, it hasn't been easy because it's we ask gold. We're not a professional. We're not as professional mm -hmm. as the guys. So it's it's been difficult for them uh, just getting uh, all the girls together and making um, like a session where maybe we can wake up at eight a at eight a.m. and join the session at Virgin Active and stuff like that. But with Cricket South Africa, they've been uh, um, 
keeping track of everything that we're doing, and especially since we have watches, you can uh, also update your RPEs and everything. So it's it's really good that uh, CSA is also checking uh, all the goals, especially with all the contracted goals. Uh, they send us uh, schedules and uh, sessions that we have to do on a daily basis, or maybe um, uh, the whole week we're doing this and the next week we're doing uh, the next thing. So it's it's with Cricket South Africa, they've always been advanced with uh, doing those kind of things. That's awesome. And from my side, uh, what's this? at Easterns, we have a good uh, what's this relationship. And we have uh, our fitness trainer, uh, Zane Webster, where we send him our stuff and he keeps, uh, what's this? he keeps tabs on us that you're doing this and this. So it's just been a, a good communication in terms of that where you know, every Sunday we just send our, our stuff through what you've done during the week. Then he uploads it. Then he'll tell you that you need this or you need more of this. So he's actually been great in that. And I think uh, he relayed all that message to Coach uh, Dusty, which is actually big on fitness. Yeah, I know that um, the episode with him was quite interesting to think about how the way he thinks, etc., about the game. I was really intrigued about it, by it as well, taken aback by the way he thinks about the things. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's just talk about your guys, your relationship, and just explain to the to the fans out there um, what your relationship is, etc. And um, cricket wise, how it brought you together, and etc. Now, me and Tumi's relationship, yes, we we are cousins because most 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 of the time, you know, we tell people that we're sister and brother, but we are cousins. Uh, we grew up together in the same house. Yes, we've you know. We've been good friends in terms of opening up with each other and telling each other what's happening in your life. And with cricket, uh, cricket just brought us closer. Like even now, we, we're actually talking stuff beyond and outside of cricket. And also the conversations we have about cricket are very constructive. And, and I'm also learning from her because she's playing a different level. And also she's also learning from me as a batsman. And yeah, it's, it's very interesting how much you can learn from someone else who is in the same industry as you but is looking at a, at a different perspective because for, for for me as a batsman i'm just thinking yo i need to score runs i need to score runs and all that where she's like don't forget about your processes just do whatever you know and then everything will fall back where instead of us as batsmen we most of the times focused on the end result and that's where she helps me in terms of that yeah. And yeah, for me, I think uh, we, we grew up together. We did everything together. And uh, so we used to play in the neighborhood most of the time. And I used to bowl at, at him. And like, if I get my, my length wrong, he hits me far. So like, he would tell me like everything that uh, maybe this is the length that I struggle at. So I think for me or for a person that bats like this, you need to push the length a bit backwards or forward or be fuller and on all of that so I actually I learned a lot from him as a batsman and also I mean I always wanted to be an all-rounder and <laughs> I do <laughs> always wanted to be an all-rounder so I learned a lot from him <laughs> yeah, that's quite interesting for you as um, growing up I mean obviously I think you're only one year apart I think you one year younger than him so like um so it must have been amazing that you guys kind of learned cricket together and became fans of the game together basically how did that happen how did you guys get into cricket what what was your inspirations oh uh, we knew for me it was watching graham smith i, I used to oh. love graham smith as an opening batsman you know but uh except for that like it started off with uh my other cousin called neil he started playing cricket and then after that we just followed man and then we fell in love with the game from there because like, you know, a typical township boy, you know, you get enrolled in sports like soccer, you know, all these sports where cricket is like, oh, it's a different sport. And that's what actually drew me into it, that, you know, try something different. And yes, guess what? Sky is the limit now. Yeah. I mean, um, I yeah, just I think want, before I get to me, okay. uh, before I get to you to me, I'm just going to ask you one more question is that. The, 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 you obviously know about this. There's this, this constant talk about producing more Black African batsmen, etc., in the country, and obviously how difficult it can be with regards to um, getting uh, exposed to that. Um, tell me about the struggle of that, because I mean, we we know it's it's difficult with everything that's surrounding you. And you said growing up in the township, etc. 
how did you manage to, to own your craft and, and focus on what you needed to do? How, how did you did you inspire yourself to get there and who helped you on that path? Yeah, there's actually been a lot of people who have actually helped me there. But for me, I think personally, um, the love of the game is the one that kept me pushing because sometimes like some other circumstances would, you know, would not allow me to actually push, uh, push through or make practices and all that. But just the love of the game just made me persevere. And like, there's this other coach of mine called uh, Coach Raymond, uh, Fred. So those are the guys who actually helped me even in my later stages and my start of my career. Uh, guys like Ngam, they also played a, 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 a huge role in terms of where I am right now. So I will... I wouldn't actually discredit anyone for for not helping me, but everyone who's helped me along the way have played their vital role of getting me here. Yeah, and for you, to me, it's not only about. I think it's it's a double-ended sword for you because kind of you yeah, being a woman in the sport, it can be quite tough to. Okay, these days it's a lot easier. I feel than it used to be. Maybe I mean I talk to maybe the older generations, but for you, it must have been just as tough to to get recognized and find this path as a career for you i mean you've made an amazing stride and i remember telling your story on cricket fanatic magazine before and and speaking to you before about these things and i remember interviewing at the csa awards and i was just taken aback by your your humbleness your humility etc and even though you were nervous and you told me that and i said okay maybe this is an opportunity (laughs) i remember how nervous you were but okay so uh with regards to that just explain to me what it was what it's like for you at what it was like for you to to go on the journey that you were, and obviously living in our soul that there's guys that are playing the sport and competing constantly against them. Um, what learning curves did you get from that? Uh, I think I've I've always played around boys, um, and there was a stigma that the you need to play you need to play netball, uh, you need to play volleyball, or other or other sporting or other what they call women's sports. And for me, it was really difficult because when I got into a cart, uh, like I would also get that um, I wouldn't get the confidence because I would, when I'd ball to a guy, then they'd hit me far, and I'd be like, oh, they always hit me and stuff like that. So it always been hard. It, it has always been hard for me um, growing up around uh, boys, especially Cabello. You know, when you ball to Cabello, he never gets out. So I also got the. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it wasn't really easy, and also again. Uh, Going to a tennis a tennis court a tennis court and and also not getting the facilities and you know with guys they easily adapt to the facilities and the environment with me it was very difficult um, and also again with uh, growing up uh, my adolescent stages going to tell my mom uh, to buy me sports bras and all of that it always like it has always been very difficult for me to to grow up in that kind of environment but I mean obviously the people that actually uh, gave me the confidence to 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 push and I, I always remember Kabel used to tell me no you'd go far and I'd be like oh it's a it's a man's sport it's a guy sport you know but uh, I think I also gave myself confidence that uh, if I really love this and it's my passion then why not of course and now what I want to know from you is like, first, let's start with Cabello. And I want to know what you've learned from Tumi's journey and vice versa. Tumi, what you've learned from Cabello's journey. From Tumi's journey, I've learned that with being patient, things can happen at a very rapid rate. Like where from where she was at a stage, she was like, you know what? I'm stopping playing cricket. It, uh, this is not for me and this was what when she was around about what 15 16 she stopped playing cricket she's like oh this is not for me this is a boy sport and all that and to think about that turnaround from when she came back she immediately got into the eastern's uh, senior women's team and then she played the girls week where i think she took nine in one game yeah. she took nine wickets in one game and then yep. after that she made the sa schools and then from there on, like it's history, she got into the SA emerging and then ended up playing for the protest women. So it's it has taught me a lot of patience where with me, I'm I've I've, I've always had this thing where they're saying, Yes, you were shadow of, of your cousin, she's playing for protest and you playing here. And I'm like, you know what, we're going in, in different journeys. Patience. If it is meant for me to play up there, I will play there. That's a great inspiration. Uh, with regards to you, Tumi, what have you learned from him? 
Um, Gabel has always been very confident in everything he does. And I always, like I used to, um, usually when I don't get wickets or if I, I, I play, uh, sorry to say, if I play cack, but uh, I'd, usually, <laughs> I'd usually try. <laughs> Yeah, I'd usually cry and go ask uh, for days and say maybe I, I'm not good enough and stuff like that. And he's always taught me that you need to, ha in everything you do, if you don't do well or you do well, you need to keep your head up high and always uh, keep pushing. I mean, it, it has always it has always been that with me and him, and it's and it's really. Um, great to have him by my side i mean i if i need advice in everything that i do i know he's i know he's not a bowler but if i need advice and everything he comes to I, I go to him and he tells me everything that i that i need to hear <laughs> i guess that's incredible you guys are both inspiration to many i feel um your journeys that you've gone on let's start with cabello again and we will move um to to me but I want to talk to you about your your time with um, the SA under 19 side, etc., and your 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 career and how it's gone so far. Obviously, being part of a championship Eastern side under um, under Dasi, um, what has the journey been like? Um, are you are you confident? Are you happy with the way your journey has gone, or what have you learned from the time that you've that you've progressed? I mean, you're still very young. There's still a long, long. You still have a long career ahead of you um so yes. what is there that you've that you've learned yes Eve, i've learned a lot eh? i think uh when they say you you get experience by playing more games i didn't believe that or i didn't know what it was but now i i know what it is and i think i'm still a long way from that where i'm learning more about myself how my game is and what i need to do and when how like that's been my journey even from the from the it's the under 19 days where you used to play with guys who went to big schools like Kez, uh, Ronda Bosch and all that, where for me, I just came from a school where, you know, what's going on small? Who, know, who even knows about it? So it was just learning from those guys how they interpret cricket and and how they, they, they their coaching has been coming about because the same information, I took it back into my school and other guys actually got to learn how the game has been played. And even moving into senior provincial cricket. Yes, it's been a very tough journey where, you know, I've been in and out the team, you know, been with studying and, you know, because even because I started this side and then I went to border. And in border, yes, you know, you need to work for your spot. So it is just a matter of earning your stripes, which for me, I think I'm very grateful for that because I was not just given the the right to say you play. You had to work for it and earn it. And that's what I still, even today, appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, there's some, some great na um, names that you played with, um, et cetera. Um, are you in touch with a lot of your teammates? Who are you still in touch with? And, and um, to keep you to motivated, et cetera. Also, I want to ask you about that Eastern side, learning from the likes of... Um, the guys that I've had on the show, guys like Grant Thompson, etc., and guys like um, uh, Wesley Marshall, etc., and guys like that. What, what have you learned from from figures like that? Yes, I've I've actually learned a lot eh? with uh, with the game and also outside of of cricket, especially from Tomo. I've learned a lot from him because yes, he's actually very smart and he's very wise in terms of how he goes about things. He knows when to do what. And and the thing is, to be fair, I'm one of those guys who are very inquisitive. I always ask, why are you doing this? Or when are you doing this? So he, they, they, they've been patient with that. Even with Wesley, where I would open with him and he'd be like, if you think you're capable of doing it, do it. And that confidence just rubbed off me because he's a power player and he's like very confident in himself where with me, it was, yes, I don't want to go out. What is coach going to say if I go out? And that confidence of him saying, you know what? Bet yourself, you see the ball, it needs to go. So that's, that also has helped me in terms of even with when I got my debut for the Titans, I just thought of the same thing. I was like, you know what? Whatever you've done before you've played, yeah, you must keep doing. Don't be in your shell because I do tend to do that sometimes where I just go back in my shell and be like, you know, I don't want to do this and do that. Where sometimes you must just give it your all and if it works out, it does work out. Yeah, and um, I want to ask you, winning trophies with them. I mean, um, we know the story of Richard, how he turned around that um, eastern side and really brought a different mindset. What was it like to be part of a championship team? 
Yes. <laughs> it's a uh, yes. I'm I'm speechless when I actually have to talk about it because, yo, great, great memories, and also the hard work, whatever, and what Dasi and the staff have done in in the uh, behind the scenes. It's great. Eh? It's it's something very special. And considering that we haven't won a trophy in yes, how long? Yeah. So for me, it's it was very special. Good. That's awesome. To me, we know that with regards to your journey and making the, the Proteus woman side at such a young age, I remember around about when I did my first interview with you, it was about when you were just get, got selected. And I remember with the interview, you were in between moving from going to campus and you were on a taxi going to campus and you had to phone me as well. At that, oh, I had to phone you at the time and find a time for you and you were rushing around and you were nervous. I remember that clearly in my mind. And then obviously then seeing you make your debut for the protest and what you've achieved with them and um, a true inspiration to all cricketers out there and especially women in the game. But so far from your journey, making your debut, etc., and things going right for you, what have you, what has stood out to you about your career so far? And coming into that team with the Proteus women at such a young age, what was it like to be in there with all the senior people around you? You've got the likes of Tana Infanikek and Marazan Kapu. You've um, got, um, obviously, a lot of other people, Ayabonga, that's been incredible. What have you learned from the people in that in that environment? And what was your journey like with regards to the, the Proteus setup? Yeah, obviously, when I got into the Proteus setup, I was very nervous and I was very discouraged because I thought, like, everybody was a was always uh, being told that you need to be tall for for you to bowl faster and stuff like that. And that that also t tell me that there are a lot of uh, black bowlers and you're not going to get the chance. And when I got into the side, I think I was a bit nervous and I didn't um, believe in myself as much. And yeah, as soon as I, I just uh, broke out of my shell, I spoke to people like Marizan Kap, Ayabonga Kaka, and I'm still close to them even now. Uh, they told me everything that I needed to hear, especially um, with um, Shibnam. Shibnam is not the, the tallest, but she bowls fast. So um, yeah. I started taking advices from them. Um, I've always wanted to bowl like Shibnam, like she's very fast and <laughs> can bowl a bouncer as well. But I'm still, I'm still learning. I'm still learning from them. Um, and obviously having Danae as our captain, it's, it has always been a an 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 exciting journey for me because I, I she's one person that actually opens up and uh, when she opens up she makes me feel um very uh, comfortable and talk more and stuff like that so yeah it's 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 great to have them <laughs> as my teammates yeah of course it is and um, obviously the World Cup I want to speak about that because for me it was a positive um even though the, what happened in the World Cup and and. I felt the way you guys exited was heartbreaking. I still remember watching the semi-final, etc., and really feeling heartbreak for it because I mean I think that you guys deserve to go through, etc. And um the rain you can't really control that. And I think it was a bit of an unfair situation because I mean um, being in a situation where it was very chaseable from the start of the, the match, ending up into a position where it's almost impossible to even though you put in all the hard effort to be able to restrict them to the score that you did, I thought it was phenomenal and the way the team performed in that match. And it was an inspiration to all South Africans around the world on the way this team has really grown over the years and become, I think, a phenomenal example of, of sport in South Africa. Um, talk to me about the World Cup and what that experience was like for you. I know you mentioned, for example, that that uh, video that you guys posted with you guys, the dance off against West Indies, etc. You had some fun times. Tell me about some of the fun times during this, this the, the period and also some of the lows and now you guys are going to kind of recover. Or you as personally, uh, what your role in the team is to recover from that. Uh, I remember back in the days when we used to lose games, we would all um, sob in the room and we'd, we wouldn't get any um, confidence for us to maybe... Uh, go back tomorrow and, and maybe um, fix our mistakes or or things like that. But now um, I think when we got to to the World Cup, we just told ourselves that regardless of everything, regardless of losing or winning, we're always going to be a team, and we all we've always fought for um, 
uh, for everything that we've always wanted to achieve. And I remember they also brought a psychologist for us to 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 help us uh, through the journey and stuff like that. And they, I remember they brought one psychologist to to our India tour and it was really heartbreaking. Um, and everything, I think the journey just just is very heartbreaking for me. And just talking about uh, the World Cup, um, it's really heartbreaking for me. And I'm, I'm still, I'm still, um, I'm still going through that because uh, when the rain actually poured, yes, yeah, say we actually looked at ourselves and be like, hey, we know that they're always going to favor the Australians and stuff like that. So it was really heartbreaking for us to go through that. But uh, other than that, I think we've worked really hard from uh, playing our first game against uh, England and winning our bit. That was the first time winning against England. Uh, England in in a World Cup and everybody was shocked and like, hey, South Africa is back and we we knew that we we were going to go far and we always wanted to be at the the finals, uh, but unfortunately, um, the rain happened and everything happened. But other than that, I think uh, having uh, the team uh, sitting in the in the chairs and watching everybody do their thing. I remember uh, Minion's uh, first performance against England, Wolfie, Nunculego, and every, everyone actually played a role in uh, getting us to be where we were. And I think I'm really grateful to be part of that team. Yeah, phenomenal. I think you guys have a bright future ahead of you. People don't must remember that you guys are very young and the team is extremely young, apart from maybe Amino um, Dupree and maybe um, Cup that they, and Shibnam, but the rest of the team is pretty, pretty young still. I think Tane has still a, a long way to go in her career. You, of course, Fofi, um, we've got obviously Sune Lourdes, etc. I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal team, and I think you guys have an amazing, bright future ahead of you. KB, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about being a black, black batter and black African batsman, um, because there's a lot of, um, I think, Stereotypes that come with it, I feel, um, because it's almost like you guys are, have been given pressure almost automatically to perform. Um, I want I want you to give some insight to other young batsmen coming through the system. I mean, um, give them some some lessons that maybe you can teach them that they can take away that they can because I know the circumstances can be quite difficult to to succeed. And guys like you are beacons of hope and guys like you are examples for those young batters. So what can you give them as inspiration or advice going forward? I think firstly for me uh, to the upcoming young bats, black batsmen, it's, it's a matter of stay hungry, never get satisfied or never get happy with 30s. Because even with me, I've, I went past that stage where I was like, you know what, 30 or 50 is good enough. But that's a, the, the problem, that's where we sell ourselves short, where we think that's good enough, which is not. I personally feel that we are capable of actually making big runs, and other guys have showed that before. And being, as a black African batsman, as you said, you are, there's a lot of stigmas, yes, he's in the team, mm. quota and all that, which I, I personally feel that's like white nose, just let that out and just play and focus on what uh, the task in hand. So it's just that way, staying, staying focused, all that white noise, just let it out and just keep going, man. But the biggest thing for me is that never get satisfied, always stay hungry. And that's where you will succeed. Yeah. And for you, Tumi, because being a, a woman in cricket at the moment, not necessarily earning contracts at, at, the, at the franchise level, as we, oh, at the provincial level, as we know, I feel that women in cricket are kind of the biggest cricket fanatics out there because you're doing it for the love of the game, not necessarily always the money. And only when you get to national contracts, then you start earning and seeing, reaping the rewards of that. But what sort of lessons can you give to the young women out there that are trying to become um, cricketers? Um, what sort of lessons can you give them and advice? Yeah, I think I've has, has touched a bit about uh, being patient and, and always building up in whatever that you want to do. Um, yeah, I've always been... I've always been patient in everything and I think for, for them to, to also make it and they just need to follow the process, love the process and fall in love with the process. And also again, yeah, be patient and uh, your time will come, definitely. Cool. So this is the part of the, to mark my 50th episode, I thought you want to play a little game. I want to get to go know you guys through each other. 
So I'm going to ask you some questions that are directed to the both of you and you need to answer it according to each other. So I'm going to ask favorite. Let's start with something easy. Let's start with something that, that, that is hard to do because I know that you guys must be, I've been watching a lot of Netflix, etc., and all of those type of things. With regards to the last five Netflix episodes or movies, whatever you've watched, what do you think was your favorite thing that you've binged or watched during this period of lockdown? KB and Tumi. So I want Tumi to say what KB um, watched that he would have enjoyed, what you think he would have enjoyed, and vice versa. Um, I think he would have enjoyed watching... Um... <laughs> Insecure, I don't know. Insecure, the series called Insecure. No, <laughs> I don't understand. No, wrong. You would have loved to watch uh, Blood and Water. No, <laughs> no way. No. No. You wouldn't call you. She's been talking about it a lot and saying that. Yeah, but that's not my first though. <laughs> so what's the what? What is the what is the answer? Uh, for me, I've always want, uh, wanted to watch Grownish. My one is what's this? Shadow. Shadow. Okay, guys, give me a quick summary of what each of those is because I haven't watched either. <laughs> okay. So, so to me, what's Grownish? Okay, so Grownish is a series about uh, young. Um, or youth, I can say like it's about youth and they're still growing up and finding themselves and, and also getting into college after high school and stuff like that. They're still finding themselves, um, who to, to date, uh, what they, they want to become and stuff like that, yeah. Cool. Shadow is, uh, what's this? it's a South African show. It's a Netflix original where there's this guy who was in the military, then he quit, then he's like, finding out uh, what's this like people who are doing bad things on the streets and then people have to pay him for that i'm gonna watch that that sounds awesome okay both of it i'll try both of it just for the sake of it uh, <laughs> i can't do another one without the other okay cool if you could pick any song on a list or any song okay wait let's let's, let's change it if you could pick any artist to listen to for an entire day um, which artist would that be? Who would go, you know the rules? <laughs> mm. uh, she would listen to Ella Maya. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ella Maya though. Oh, um, I think you would listen to Georgia Smith. Yes. Yeah. There yeah, she got it right. <laughs> oh, wow. First point goes to Tumi. <laughs> Tumi, who was, who was the person that you would listen to? Elena Perez. And I told him, I told him the other day, we were listening to her music. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got one point going to Tumi and uh, zero for KB. Okay, cool. So let's say... Okay, let's do this. Favorite cricketer. That's an easy one. That's nice cricket related. Graham Smith. Yeah, she got it right. <laughs> uh, I would say Shibman Ishmael. Yay! <laughs> okay, cool. That's right. <laughs> two, two, one. Um, two. What's a what's a what's a nice one? Um, Okay, uh, if you could have, okay, it's a cheat day. First, first takeaway or first, yeah, t first takeaway you go to on a cheat day. I know, I know. Um, chicken licking. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Is it? No. <laughs> okay. She knows what's my thing. It's what's this, um... Bacon ever when feta cheese pizza. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do okay. we definitely go a McFeast at McDonald's? Definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Okay, cool. Um, we've got that. That's awesome. So I think we're gonna just end it over there with Tumi has won and KB has lost, but it doesn't really matter who wins or loses. I think I learned a little bit more about you. We'll maybe continue with it a little later. I just got a question here in the comment section. Um, would you like to see AP the Villiers in the T20 World Cup squad? <laughs> so this this is comes from Dan, who is my co-host on my podcast show, and we had a whole episode dedicated to whether AB should return or not, and you can go watch that episode to see what my views and his views are. So this is kind of to settle the argument. <laughs> I would say yes. I would love to see A. And why? And why? What is your reason for it? Yeah, that guy is, yes, he's a complete athlete. Eh? Like what he does on the field, I think even his presence itself would do a lot. Like, and the way he bats, oh my word, he's... He plays some ridiculous shots, and I would love to see that again in him wearing the green and gold. I would love that. Awesome. Dooms? Uh, yes, definitely. I'd love to see AB again in the field. I mean, he's a world class. And I mean, who doesn't want to see or who doesn't want to be entertained? I mean, AB is just gun. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch a lot of men's cricket growing up as well? Um, did you get to see a lot of women's cricket growing up as well? No, I've always watched uh, men's cricket, especially because I was with um, my cousins. I would watch Makayantini, um, Venon Finland, and, and yeah, and, and etc. I've always watched uh, men's cricket, and I'm also inspired by um, what they do in the field. I mean, look at Van, like, swings the ball, like, this much and who doesn't want to swing the ball like that so yeah <laughs> cool. so one last question from with regards to this game that we were playing i wanted to say if there was three things that either of you could take to an island i want to see if you guys can guess each other's one so if there's three things you could take to an island you could only take three items what would it be i think for kb would be his wi-fi xbox <laughs> And a blanket. <laughs> okay. Uh she got the two out of two right out of the out of the three. Okay. I will take my Wi-Fi and Xbox. What but the, the blanket I don't need bed. <laughs> uh what hers would be she would most probably take shoes. Clothes, gang, clothes, like a lot of clothes. And she must probably take the whole of McDonald's with her. <laughs> Those are the three things. Uh, that's definitely right. Exactly. <laughs> so, massive McDonald's yeah. fan. That is insane. I, be yeah. I, I love McDonald's too. Um, I haven't had it yet in lockdown yet. Although I know they're open and they're allowing drive through. But... Uh, yeah, that's a, that's an awesome part. So I'm, I'm enjoying this because it's, it's opening you guys up a lot. Um, let me think. If there's okay, if there's any bowler, right, international bowler that KB would um, back himself against, and for you, batsman, that you would back yourself to get out. So is he supposed to say mine or? So you should he say. Must... So you should say which batsman you think you'd back yourself against, and he must say which bowler he, you must say which bowler he would back himself against. If it was, I'm talking about international cricket, not necessarily doesn't necessarily yes. have to be South African. It could be South African if you think it is. I would go for her. I would go with this uh, <laughs> Susie Bates. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yes. <laughs> and for KB, I think Jofra Acha. Yes, if yes. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. That's a brilliant one for you to <laughs> Because I've been... uh, let's go with. Oh yes, that's a question for you. Sorry, KB. There was a question from Daniel. He said that what is it like playing against the English? I think you opened and did more than decently. Yes. Is he right? Yes, he has a, <laughs> that is another experience. Yes, he, I would say for me, yes, it was 
it was a dream come true because uh, Joe Root is like the guy. Yes, he's he's also one of the guys which I I love seeing play. So yeah, it was a dream come true for me, and also doing well against them was like a cherry on top. And for the mere fact that I had nothing to lose, like that mentality was like, you know what? Give it your all. You have nothing to lose. What's the worst that could happen? And to think about it, I kept doing what I've been doing, and it just paid off. Yeah. Is opening something that you want to do? As Is that a position that you see yourself um, yeah, taking up in the future? Yes. Uh, because the thing is, I was not really an opener. But mm. then, obviously, I'm asking. With, <laughs> yeah, with moving back this side, I had to adapt to that. And to be fair, I actually love it. I love it, in, especially in, in, in white ball cricket. Because like the field's up. And I'm not a big fan. I'm, a, I'm not a big hitter of sixes, but a few of them can go over cow corner. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've seen. I've looked at your stats and your list and your and your and your first class cricket is kind of similar with regards to your averages, etc., and the way you've performed. So, you're a type of guy that I feel that can play all formats. I don't know how you feel about T20 cricket. How much do you enjoy T20 cricket? I mean, I mean, obviously in women's cricket. T20 has become massive in, in, in promoting the game. Um, we would like to see more um, longer format cricket. Is that something that you still want to play to me? Test matches, etc. And um, when, when yes. do you think that we'll get to that phase? And yeah, um, I mean, obviously, uh, ladies cricket hasn't been um, hasn't gotten to that point whereby they want us to play uh, test cricket, especially in South Africa and other countries. I mean, I've seen. Uh, the English have played uh, Australia and other teams have they've been playing test cricket for a while now. And I think it shows also in the field that they also playing uh, um, longer games and they're also playing, they're getting uh, game time. So I think for me, well, for us in South Africa, I think I would love to have that so that we can game, we can get game time and gain experience. And also it, it's also going to show in the field. So I think it's, uh, it's best if they would make us play test crickets. Yeah, because KB, I want to talk to you about the T20 game and you're saying you're not a guy that necessarily are big eating. Um, you don't really see yourself like that. You're more of a stroke player, which is brilliant because I, pref I prefer actually cricketers that can play the gaps and etc. and manipulate the ball. Um, a guy like, um, let me see, for example, a guy like Alvarena, for example, that I've seen play first hand is a guy like that too, who likes to manipulate the ball, play the fan, the gaps, etc. Not necessarily a guy that wants to smack the sixes, but I think there's places for those type of players in T20 cricket, especially in the top order. So, with regards to T20 cricket, what is your thoughts on that? <laughs> oh, to me too, yeah. cricket is cricket. <laughs> 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 oh, Khaled, with uh, T20 cricket for me is I haven't played a lot of T20, I would say. But I would love mm -hmm. to actually expand my trade to actually even play T20 cricket because I don't, I'm not selling myself short and saying I only play long format and 50 overs. I also would love to play mm -hmm. T20 cricket and also expand myself because I personally feel I don't need to limit myself and I'm capable of more than just playing two formats. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's awesome. Okay, let's, let's go back to the game that we were playing. Um, one non-cricket celebrity that you guys love. So, Gaby, what is someone that she looks up to that's a celebrity that's non-cricket related? And vice versa, of course. Ooh, it's a tough one. It's a really tough one. I have to go... Rihanna... <laughs> okay, I didn't expect that. Um, <laughs> I think for me, it has to be Megan Good. Um, oh my word! <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's a very, that's a very interesting one, actually. <laughs> Megan Good. I, false. I don't. I don't. I don't like Rihanna. <laughs> yes. That's a good place. <laughs> At KB, who's KB? Um, KB's. 
You said cricket, non non cricket, outside non cricket, cricket related celebrity. Yeah, David Beckham. Nope, <laughs> got it wrong. She was close, she was close, but she got it wrong. CR7. No. Oh, wait. I don't I'm, know. I'm... <laughs> Lionel Messi. See. Oh, yes. Now I remember. Oh, my God. I remember. Sure she... How did she get that great song? Um... <laughs> 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 I be actually. Now I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so by us saying that, that opens up with regards to football. You're not a United fan then. Or no. Who do you support? Okay. Chelsea. Then you Chelsea. would have got a go. And of course, you would have got it completely wrong because I doubt he would have liked CR7 and David Beckham, the two number series at United. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just guessing. <laughs> so you are also you are one of the guys in the, in in, in Dassey's team that he sticks about where he's like there's the United, the Liverpool, the Chelsea. So you are one of the other guys. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I I respect Chelsea. I'm gonna come out clean. I'm a man, massive Man United supporter. Um, and me and Richard had an amazing conversation about that. But I do respect Chelsea. Are you excited to see Premier League football? Do me, do you watch Premier League football at all or football at all? I don't. Honestly, okay. I don't. So she's probably gonna zone out now for a little while while we talk about a little bit of football. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what, is, what is your thought process about uh, the Premier League coming back? Are you excited to see Chelsea? What's your thoughts on Lampard? Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited because at least uh, we have something to do to watch, you know, in the weekends and all that. Uh, Lampard's actually doing a good job, and I'm very excited about our new signing, Timo Werner. He's gonna hurt the boys. I was heartbroken by that because one of my favorite players. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm not looking forward to is um, what's this Liverpool winning the league? Oh, I'm not looking forward to that. Oh my word! Me neither. Ooh, that's United. Because my, my friends have been rubbing it in my face, saying, "Yes, you, we, uh, you thought that uh, what's this coronavirus is gonna make us not take the title? Guess, guess what? You're gonna take it." <laughs> So, Toby, just to give you some context, Liverpool winning the league for me, it's like watching your, it's like watching your your ex partner be with your enemy, your worst enemy. Like the love of, it's like seeing it's like seeing the love of your life go and be with your your worst enemy. That's how it no, feels I'm when Liverpool is going to look that. Never. <laughs> <laughs> not even, not a chance. <laughs> so yeah, so that's that's the feeling. So guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. I thought this was an awesome. I had a lot of fun getting to know you guys a lot more, and I'm hoping that I can get to know you more in the future. Um, lastly, I just want a message from both of you, um, just to the cricket fanatics fans out there, and just leave them with a, a message of of goodwill. Uh, from my side, uh, please stay safe in these uncertain times and keep supporting us. We'll be on the field soon. And thanks for the support and all these years of supporting us. And all, not only us, but cricket at large. Thank you. Uh, and for me, I think uh, I hope that uh, you all are uh, keeping safe and keeping your hopes up high. Um, I know a lot of people lost their jobs and uh, they've been they haven't been uh, getting salaries and stuff like that. And just just be patient, and your time will come. So another example of that Liverpool winning the league. Dan said it's like Dale Stein playing for Australia. That's that's a great example. Never. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Imagine watching uh, uh, Owen Dale. <laughs> Pulling to thing in South Africa. No, no ways. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks a lot, guys, for coming on the show. Thanks a lot to everybody that has watched the show. Thanks a lot for celebrating this 50th episode with me. I want you guys to please subscribe, like this video, share it with your fan. Guys, please, if you can, share it to your to your followers too. It will be greatly appreciated as well. Stay safe, guys, and I hope everybody out there, please 
please just be safe and um, good luck to you both of your careers. I'm going to be following it very closely, and I'll love to catch up with you guys in a few, in, in quite soon. Thanks, guys. Thank okay, you. from our side, thank you very much for having us. Um, we had a good time. Enjoyed it. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, guys. See you. All right. Bye.